Welcome to Pleasant Green Sunday School. This is Lesson 10 for February the 4th, 2018. We began a new unit today, uh, Unit 3, entitled Self-Control, Upright, and Godly Faith. Our topic for today, taken from the Adult Quarterly, is Actions Speak Louder Than Words. Actions Speak Louder Than Words. Our devotional reading comes out of Psalm 143. Our background scripture comes out of the book of James, chapter 2, uh, verses 14 through 26. And we'll be studying from uh, James, chapter 2, verses 14 through 26. Our key verse reads, Even so, faith, if it hath not works, is dead, being alone. That's James chapter 2, uh, verse 17 from the King James Version. Our lesson aims today, number one, is to comprehend the teachings of James regarding the relationship between uh, faith and works. Our second aim is to regret those times when deeds have not lived up to words. And thirdly, to serve God with actions that match faith expressions. We have... Uh, three outlines today from our study uh, in the adult quarterly. The first outline is entitled Dead Faith. Uh, the second outline is entitled Dutiful Faith. And then our third outline is entitled Dedicated Faith. I thank and praise God today for this privilege to be able to uh, share another Sunday School lesson with you today. We certainly thank God for what we are learning uh, through the through the Word of God uh, through uh, through our faith and through practical application uh, so we praise God for that but we hope that you will join us today in our study uh, you'll need your Bible and uh, pen and paper we're going to give you some scriptures today and we're going to just share what thus says the Lord and uh, prayerfully you will be uh, the better after uh, after our study today uh, but I want to read a little bit of the biblical context for this lesson uh, James in this letter simply called himself a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ he wrote to the twelve tribes which were scattered abroad this was a symbolic designation for the Christian church conceived as the new Israel as her members were scattered abroad in an alien and hostile world. James, therefore, uh, did not have in mind a singular church congregation, but the church at large, specifically uh, the church throughout the Mediterranean world, often referred to as the known world. Uh, in this letter from James, he dealt uh, in chapter 1 with uh, the trials of Christians um, that they face uh, he also dealt with the balance between poverty and wealth. He talks about uh, how we should view and handle trials and temptations. Also our reception by the world. Uh, he deals with uh, true religion. Uh, and so it is from this stance that he transitioned into our lesson uh, on faith and work. So the book of James is one of those Jewish Christian epistles um, uh, as we said uh, directly uh, targeting the Jewish um, Christians who were being persecuted uh, because of their faith but we want to note here a couple of things that uh, uh, as we saw uh, this term about the Jews being scattered uh, I want you to turn very quickly uh, with me to Acts chapter 8. Uh, there was some reference given in our study as to what was happening um, uh, in terms of the Jews being scattered. But Acts chapter 8 uh, verse 1 
The Bible says now Saul was consenting to his death. Uh, this would be uh, Stephen. And then it goes on to say at that time a great persecution arose against the church uh, which was at Jerusalem and they were all scattered throughout the regions of Judea and Samaria um, except the apostles. And then I want you to turn with me to Acts chapter 11 and we want to go down to uh, verse 19 and then the Bible says that now those who were scattered after the persecution that arose over Stephen traveled as far as Phoenicia, Cyprus and Antioch preaching uh, the word to no one but the Jews only. So we get some perspective here about where these Jews were uh, in terms of uh, 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 a geographical location uh, that uh, James saw fit to write uh, uh, to them um, to encourage them uh, in their stance uh, uh, in terms of the Christian faith and so we want to keep that in mind but we also want to make mention uh, that there were two uh, of the original apostles of Jesus are named James so we want to focus a little bit about which James we are talking about so the James who was uh, the brother of John was murdered by Herod quite early in the history of the church too early for him to have been the author of the book of James I want you to look at Matthew chapter 10 verse 2 and also Acts chapter 12 verse 1 and 2 we won't have time to go there today but you can get some reference as to which James we are referring to as the author of the book that we are studying. Also uh, the other James uh, was the son of Alphaeus. Uh, you can see that in Matthew chapter 10 verse 3 uh, is a possibility but his lack of mention in the New Testament aside from um, uh, the list of the 12 apostles makes him unlikely as the author of the book uh, under consideration and then most likely uh, this book this uh, the book of James uh, is the one or the son of Mary and Joseph who was uh, the half-brother of Jesus I want you to look in Mark chapter 6 verse 3 and so um, another point uh, about this uh, the writer of this book, uh, James, was a prominent leader uh, in the Jerusalem church in its early days. I want you to look at Acts chapter 15 verse 13 and also Galatians chapter 1 verse 19. So I want to get to the outlines today but I hope you're able to uh, do some reference. We like to unpack the book that uh, we are studying to get some reference as to who we are talking about and uh, some of the outlines that will help us to understand what we are studying. So we want to begin uh, from the uh, first outline of our lesson today taken from the quarterly. Uh, this is taken from James chapter 2 verses 14 through 17. Uh, beginning at verse 14 the Bible says, What doeth it profit, my brethren, uh, though a man say he hath faith, and have not works can faith save him and then verse 15 if a brother or sister be naked and destitute of daily food and one of you say unto them depart in peace be ye warmed and filled notwithstanding ye give them not those things which are needful to the body what doeth it profit and then verse 17 even so faith uh, if it hath not works is dead being alone. So you want to get into this discussion about our faith um, and also our works and get some perspective here uh, about what James is talking about here in terms of uh, uh, works uh, associated uh, with faith. Before we get into this outline I want to read something to you that I hope will be helpful uh, as we uh, dig a little deeper into this word faith. Uh, so it, it is usual to analyze faith 
as involving three steps knowledge agreement and trust first is knowledge or acquaintance with the content of the gospel second is agreement or recognition that the gospel is true and third is trust the essential step of committing the self to God these steps go together in the sense that there can be Christian faith only when the gospel is known and its truth is accepted I want you to look at Romans chapter 10 verse um, uh, 14 so John Calvin defined faith as a firm and a sure knowledge of the divine favor toward us uh, founded on the truth of free promise of Christ and revealed to our minds and sealed our hearts by the Holy Spirit so what James is doing here uh, throughout the Bible uh, we are taught as Paul wrote that we are saved by God's grace and not by any work uh, we can do I want you to look at Romans chapter 3 verses 21 through 31 uh, Galatians chapter 2 verse 16 and also Ephesians chapter 2 uh, verses 8 and 9 so James was not contradicting the teachings of Paul but was adding depth to doctrinal to to the doctrinal stance so here we get an understanding that genuine faith has genuine results and makes the difference in what we do and how we do it true faith has to manifest itself in deeds for if we really believe in God and love him dearly we will uh, follow his commands you can see that in John uh, chapter uh, the gospel according to St. John chapter 14 verse 15 so if a person says that he or she loves God but still mistreats the people encountered daily is the love of God really present? I want you to look at the first epistle of John chapter 4 verse 20 and I know that I'm giving you a lot of scriptures but we want to be able to get some perspective some biblical perspective about what James is doing here and as we study this lesson uh, as in terms of our works we understand that we cannot earn anything the grace of God is free and unmerited uh, uh, we were not saved and we cannot be saved by anything that that we can do according to the law uh, we cannot earn our way but uh, in terms of works and we're going to share something with you a, a little bit later on or, uh, 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 from scripture that your works are what should be done your works are a result or the manifestation of what you believe uh, uh, it, it, how can we see the faith uh, if it is not manifested in into uh, uh, our works if you will or our characteristics or how we do things and what we do so this is what the lesson is helping us to understand that our actions speak louder than our words how we say uh, how we love the Lord is manifest in what we do how we treat one another is a manifestation of our faith so we're not earning anything uh, by the works that we do it is what we should be doing and so uh, on that note I want to go very quickly uh, to the book of Romans and this is something that we have seen uh, uh, many many times but to help us to understand where our works come in in terms of uh, 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 us being Christians and according to uh, uh, our faith Paul says here Romans chapter 12 verse 1 I beseech you therefore brethren by the mercies of God that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice holy acceptable to God which is your reasonable service and do not be conformed to this world but be transformed by the renewing of your mind let's catch this that you may prove what is good and acceptable and perfect will of God so how does how is that uh, uh, proven uh, uh, in terms of us surrendering our lives to God and one of the ways that it is proven that our faith is genuine by what we do and how we do those things so uh, if you look at these character traits here uh, in terms of uh, uh, Paul is saying here it, 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 we should do this uh, by the mercies of God 
God has shown great mercy toward us so it's reasonable for us in light of the mercies and the grace that God has shown us that we present our bodies a living sacrifice that's a manifestation uh, our characteristics how we do things are under that heading of 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 uh, uh, of uh, holiness and these things are acceptable to God and then I like this which is your reasonable service uh, that worship uh, that is appropriate for redeemed creatures to offer so we want to keep these things in mind so we are not telling you that works are not important works are important for us as Christians we are not earning anything but we're doing what we are supposed to do uh, and, and we should not uh, 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 be in sort of a competition about these things or patting ourselves on the back because we did some good deeds though good deeds were what you should have done as a result of your faith Jesus told us to love one another as I have loved you so that's the manifestation uh, uh, of our uh, uh, adherence to his commands Jesus commands is to 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 uh, reproduce uh, among ourselves what he did toward us so you want to be able to keep these things uh, 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 into perspective so we put our love for God and genuine faith to work when we show genuine love care and compassion for those in need you know over behind the scenes of this lesson we can see the persecution setting in Christians are literally running for their lives they're scattered they're scared they're afraid they believe that uh, you know perhaps they're going to be next they don't want to uh, 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 be caught up in in the, in the situation of, of uh, being killed for their faith but but in you know what I love about this James is not giving uh, his brother an excuse to uh, be different in the world he's giving them uh, a position to hold in face of persecution you know when things are not going well I'll put it to you this way in our lives uh, that is no excuse for us not to love one another everything is not uh, 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 going well with me or going well with you but we still have to love one another we sh uh, uh, should still be able to manifest our true faith and command to Jesus Christ to do the things that he have told us to do even though things are not going well and so if we look at the the timing of this lesson uh, and the culture of this persecution it's severe uh, we just saw in Acts chapter 8 Stephen was stoned uh, for his faith and so uh, it has caused these Jews to scatter but such an attitude uh, can also block one's full reception of the spiritual nutrients needed to build faith in God this does not excuse the lazy uh, and, and allow them to become moochers I want you to look at 2nd Thessalonians chapter 3 verse 10 but it does challenge the faithful to have a sincere and loving faith that seeks to fully comfort those in need a genuine faith will have signs of faithful works this faith uh, is not a dead faith by any stretch of the imagination faith by itself if it is not accompanied by action is dead that's what the Bible says. as with anything dead it can produce nothing but if it is alive, then fruit should be growing vibrantly. This is a faith that is active and alive, meaningful and functioning very well. So you get a little bit more perspective here uh, of what faith should look like, how faith should look, how faith should look to the world. Uh, those of us that say we are of Christ, don't you know the world is looking at us to see how we act and how we conduct ourselves as people of faith so that's very important and I, I believe that uh, James is really digging at the substance and the foundation of who we say we are 
and how we are to conduct ourselves. The question is asking the quarterly, have you ever had an opportunity and the resources to help someone but chose not to do so? Uh, was there any spiritual conviction? You know, we should never feel comfortable in not helping, not helping our brothers and sisters in Christ. When you have a little time, you should read the sixth chapter of the book of Galatians. It tells us that we should do good to those, especially those of the household of faith. Uh, and so I believe and I see in this lesson that, again, as the, uh, the Jews are being persecuted, James is still calling for unity amongst the brothers and sisters. Those of us that say uh, that we are going through things, don't you know we need one another? This is not a time for us to alienate uh, one another and to be at odds with one, with one another. We are going to need one another, uh, whether we think so or not. Our trials are spilling over. Uh, into uh, uh, others lives and so what I mean by that is that we are needing uh, the assistance of our brothers and sisters so it uh, what affects one affects us all and I believe that's where uh, James is going here so we are convicted sometimes by the Holy Spirit when we don't obey the commands of Jesus Christ when we don't do the things that 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 we are called on by God to do and and we have to repent of those things and then uh, get back to obeying God. Our second outline is entitled Dutiful Faith. This is taken from James chapter 2 uh, verses 18 uh, through 22 and I want to read this from the NIV translation beginning at verse 18. The Bible says but someone will say you have faith and I have deeds. Show me your faith without deeds and I will show you uh, my faith by my deeds you believe that there is one God good even the demons believe that and shudder verse 20 you foolish person do you want evidence that faith without deeds is useless was not our father Abraham considered righteous for what he did when he offered his son Isaac on the altar verse 22 you see that this faith and his actions were working together and his faith was made complete by what he did. So James takes uh, a reference from uh, the book of Genesis uh, something that the Jews should know and that the Jews understand and he uses that uh, uh, to illustrate uh, what Abraham and how Abraham conducted himself. Uh, he did believe God and it was credited to him as uh, righteousness but at the same time Abraham also had works he obeyed he did uh, what God told him to do he offered up his own son uh, Isaac uh, 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 on the altar at the request of God so faith and his works uh, as it says here were working together uh, and so there was a, a, a unity and there was a completeness uh, in Abraham, he just not did, just did, just did not have uh, a faith, but he had works of the faith. I want you to keep that in mind. So James moved on to describe a faith uh, that is consciously dutiful and obedient in displaying its reliance on God. Uh, James in verse 18 challenged believers to show and display or prove their faith uh, without any works. By contrast offered to show his faith by his works. One should not merely talk about one's faith uh, but should be dutiful and diligent in displaying his faith in, um, co by corresponding works or actions. So James further pointed to the fact that while one may proclaim to believe in the universal God, all powerful, all present, and all knowing, even the demons believe. James added that in this verse that the demons not only believe uh, in but also fear God. The difference between the faithful and those that believe God is that we have work, works to support and show our faith. And let me just ask you a question uh, as we think about this outline here. Uh, do you love the Lord? Do you love the Lord? 
uh, and I'm sure you would respond uh, yes you do but how does the world see that you love the Lord what works are associated with your love for God how would someone uh, 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 know through your works that you love the Lord so much so that they would be willing to follow you that they might uh, come running and asking you what must they do to be saved this is where James is going with this here uh, and so we all have to take a look at why we do what we do why do you attend service why do you teach why do you preach why do you sing uh, why do you serve in various ministries? Why do you do that? And so we keep mentioning this word love, but, uh, uh, but we want to get at the motive of why we do what we do. And I hope that you and I are able to answer the question that we do the things that we do that are pleasing in the sight of God because we love him. Uh, we have not seen uh, God at any time, but we love him. Uh, we were not there with the disciples and the apostles as they followed and walked with Jesus. But we love the Lord because we believe his word and we believe this is what he would want us to do. We, would, we believe this is how our faith should manifest itself. And this is what James is really probing at uh, with his brothers uh, in the Lord is to not just say you believe, but let your works uh, be the type of works that speak to the faith to the love that you have and the trust that you have um, in a faithful God and his son Jesus Christ another question is asked in the quarterly what actions might we consider to be good examples of works based on our faith uh, I want to share some uh, some other scriptures with you today I want to read just a little bit um, of Ephesians chapter 4 but when you have a little time I want you to read Ephesians chapter 4 verses 1 through 32 and also Ephesians chapter 5 uh, verses 1 through 21 but let me read a little bit of this from Ephesians chapter 4 uh, beginning at verse 1 in light of this question that we uh, read to you about uh, the good examples the Bible says Paul says here I therefore the prisoner of the Lord beseech you to walk worthy of the calling with which uh, you were called with all lowliness and gentleness with long suffering bearing with one another in love endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace there is one body and one spirit just as you were called in one hope of your calling uh, uh, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all who is above all and through all and in you all. And it goes on to talk about the diversity of gifts, of spiritual gifts uh, in that passage. It also uh, talks about the new man. But I want to focus just a little bit on some good examples that we highlighted here uh, that should be manifest uh, as those of us who uh, 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 looking for works based on our faith Paul highlights lowliness humility in other words gentleness long suffering bearing with one another in love and I like this uh, in verse 3 endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace that is something that is so uh, needed in our culture today uh, unity and peace with one another but how would the world know that it is possible to attain such a peace and such a unity if they do not see it in the Christian or those of us who say we have the faith I want you to think about that but as we get into this last outline taken from James chapter 2 verse 23 through 26 we have a uh, uh, many many scriptures that we have shared with you that uh, will certainly start you on a study path but again uh, from the NIV translation the Bible says and the scripture was fulfilled that says Abraham believed God 
and it was credited to him as righteousness and he was called God's friend verse 24 you see that a person is considered righteous by what they do and not by faith alone in the same way was not even Rahab the prostitute considered righteous for what she did when she gave lodging to the spies and sent them off in a different direction as the body without the spirit is dead so faith without deeds is dead again another Old Testament scripture that uh, uh, according to the law that James uses that uh, he gets out of the book of Joshua chapter 2 verses 1 through uh, 13 so uh, James posed this uh, this as a question because uh, it is accepted uh, in the faith that Rahab who became an ancestor of King David and Jesus is a notable and respected figure in Jewish history uh, with unquestionable faith in and reliance on God so James showed how their dedication to God justified them before God so to close out his argument James hit hard with a comparison to the body there is no life in the body when the spirit leaves just as with faith there is no life if works are not present and then the last question share ministry work and ideas that show your dedication to God and justify uh, your faith in God I certainly hope and tr uh, trust and pray that you have received something from this lesson today to help you understand uh, how works uh, fit into or along with your faith how does the works fit in accordance with your faith and so James uh, in addition to uh, being persecuted and going through as well the Lord used him to share with his brothers and his sisters how uh, the expectation of God was that they manifest their faith through how they treated one another how they loved and cared and took care of one another how uh, uh, they loved the Lord in such a way that they were willing to uh, show uh, their faith by their works so I want to keep those things in mind I hope that you understand and I hope with the scriptures that we have given that they will be a blessing to you and finally our closing prayer Lord help us to grow in sincere works of love in through and to you may our works draw people to you and we pray that our works speak so loudly that there is no questioning of who we serve in the name of Jesus we pray amen so again God bless you God keep you and just know that God loves us God loves you uh, and so do I. So until the next time that the law will permit us to come together again, we say God bless you.